Hello, this is John by Super Chemist. We're here to talk about alpha bromination of a carbonyl compound. <clears throat> and we're specifically talking about making bromoacetone. The whole reason why this reaction works here is the equation that your acetone, bromine, some type of protons, I have acetic acid, and this will add on the bromine on the alpha position. <laughs> now, how does this happen? This, all ketones, <clears throat> you know, they to tomerize into enols, <clears throat> all right? And here's an example of it. You can think of it as an internal thing where this hydrogen down here jumps up on the oxygen and makes a um, alcohol and the double bond, you know, is split down here. I mean, actually, the electrons here, you know, this going to here, and these electrons will go down and make the double bond. This double bond will go up on top of there. <clears throat> so you have a neutral enol, okay? So it's an alkene and an alcohol, an enol. Uh, and this is what makes your reaction. Most times, though, you only have this in solution. You have very little enol without some type of acid or base. Okay? You can't use a base because it over bromates or over halogenates. And it also, with this specific example, because you have methyl groups on both sides, you would uh, do the haliform reaction. So we need to use protons. We need to use an acidic environment so that we can make a lot of this enol instead of just a little bit. Let's go to the mechanism. Like I said, enols are spontaneously made, but very little usually in solution. Um, unless, like I said, you have acid or base. Here's our acid, sulfuric acid. You know, it's going to protonate the lone pair of electrons, and you will have this alcohol thing here. But you're making an oxonium ion. This oxygen is positive. So you have a base, you need a mild base, like say the hydrogen sulfate, anion, or the water that's in there a little bit, or even an OH, because water self-ionizes, right? Any of those things in there at lone pairs can come and grab the hydrogen, the electrons fall in to make the double bond, and this double bond goes up onto the oxygen. And you end up with your enol, okay? Which is a neutral compound, right? Because you have you're, you added a proton, but then you took it back, right? So you recreated your sulfuric acid. You only need a catalytic amount, right? As you can see, you're remaking it. So anyways, here's your enol can go, you know, resonate back and forth in between these two structures, right? You could have the electrons jump down, forming your double bond again, and this double bond goes out here, to your empty um, orbital. So now you have a tetrahedral here, you have your double bond here, but now you have an oxonium ion. You know what I mean? The whole uh, ion overall is neutral, but you have negativity here and positivity there, like a Zwitter ion. So you can either think of this, this is what's going to react. This is your nucleophile. This is your negative part. The positive part comes from the bromine. And you can take out of these, either one of these resonance things. Either the double bond comes out, you know what I mean? These electrons jump down here, and this double bond attacks the bromine, right? Or you can say this does. It comes up, attacks the bromine, and you're left with a negative bromide. Here's your negative bromide. Here's your uh, acetone. Remember that. Electrons came down to form the double bond. This double bond jumped on to grab, you know, opened up to get this uh, bromine. So now you have a positive over here, oxonium ion, and you have your negative counter ion, your bromide. So it just works off this hydrogen, so <clears> that this becomes neutral. And then you end up with HBr, an acid, and you end up with your products, right? And you can see, we up at that first step when we pro protonated and deprotonated, 
we just basically recycled our sulfuric acid that we put in there. Uh, or I guess it would have been acetic acid. Whatever acid you chose. You know what I mean? It's replenished. But not only that, you make extra acid down here on this step. So it's, this is autocatalytic, you know, the reaction. You really don't need that much uh, acid to catalyze this because you're actually making acid as the reaction progresses. Now you can see how it forms the enol. Here's the equation. Yeah, it be up. Here's the enol. How do you know, let's say you had a, uh, let's say you had an unsymmetrical ketone. Now, where would the bromine add? Would it add here? Or would it add here? Well, it would add here on the more substituted side, just from, that's the intuitive thing. And also the reason why is because of this enol formation. The enol, the double bond, according to Zycep's rule, right, Zycep says he's going to, over here, it's not as uh, substituted. Over here, you, it's substituted more. You've got one, two, you know what I mean? you got this group here. If I put the double bond over here, there's nothing on this side. It's not substituted at all. So obviously, this is going to be where, it, and, and this is where the electrons come out of, you know what I mean? Right here. And on the other resonance form, they come out right here. So this is where you would add your bromine, see? On the more substituted side. Now, if you use a base here, okay, even if you had no methyl groups and you didn't have to worry about the haliform reaction, okay, you have it like this, um, you will never substitute twice on the same side, okay, if you have an acid. See how you can do that? This will never happen with two bromines on this side if you use acid. Now, if you use a base, It'll keep going until it, you know, until it has no more hydrogens to pluck off of it, right? But an acid, you can only have one. Now, I'm not saying it can't attach another bromine over here, but if it does, that's all it will attach. Even though there's another hydrogen left, right? There's another hydrogen right here. It won't pluck that off and add another, you know, bromine. It'll only add one. So if you put excess bromine in, you know, twice as much as you need. One will add here and one will add here. If you only add, you know, enough for one, it will always add just on the one side. I mean, not always. You know how chemistry is. You're making 50 million zillion byproducts or whatever. But in general, the majority will be one addition on one side. And if you add double bromine, it would be one addition on each side. All right, so like I said, it needs, it likes uh, acidic conditions. It limits the, you know, only one alpha addition with each halogen, you know, for each side. Like I said, if you put in double the amount of halogen you need, you're going to get an alpha on both sides, an alpha addition on both sides of the carbonyl, most likely that it is. Um, if you mix bromine and acetic acid, uh, you get no reaction, okay? And the third thing I wanted to bring up is that you want to keep the temp below 10 degrees Celsius. Use an ice bath. Get this stuff, you know, when you first start out, get all your chemicals as freezing cold as you can, you know, 5 Celsius if you get that low. And then try to keep the reaction below 10 C the entire time. Now let's go over how I would, I want to try this reaction. Keep in mind, this is a tear gas lacrimator. Uh, it's terrible. You ain't going to want to, you know, breathe this stuff or have it touch your eyes or anything. Because it's going to react. It's going to burn. It's going to burn your eyes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be terrible. It's, uh, it's the worst kind of tear gas you could have, man. So I want you to keep in mind when I do these videos in the summertime, you know, where there's no experiment. The reason there's no experiment is because I've never done it before. And I'm guessing on a lot of stuff. Like here. <clears throat> and I did a uh, three-part video on uh, methamphetamine and sy synthesis uh, via a uh, reductive amination. Now the instructions in that video are, are dead on. 
But then I go into some guesswork about how you can get rid of the water to get a better yield. Okay, get water out of the pot. So they'll push the, so you can't, you know, the amine will turn into the hemiaminol and back and forth. Well, it can't turn into an hemiaminol if you don't have any water in there. So if you get the water out, you get a better yield. So I go over all these stuff like anhydrous salts, uh, molecular sieves. But then I mention using a Dean Stark apparatus and using benzene as the solvent instead of methanol. Now that was a guess, and I say in there that I am guessing, you know what I mean? It's not like I, you know, I'm saying this is a fact. <clears throat> anyway, since then, I found out that you need protons in the, in the reaction mixer. The reaction won't work. So if you replace methanol that has protons with benzene that has no protons to come off, the reaction won't work. And so using a Dean Stark apparatus is irrelevant, okay? But I wanted to mention that because, you know, this is a guess right here. I mean, everything I said beforehand, you know, I, I try to say in these videos which is guesses and which is fact, you know what I mean? So far, everything in this video is a fact. Now we're getting to the guesswork because I've never done the experiment. If I did the experiment, I would film it and have it on here. You know what I mean? The, re the reason why I don't is because I never did it. <laughs> so I just want you to keep that in mind, you know what I mean? These are just ideas I have. These, this isn't factual here. This is just guesswork. Okay? So anyways, the way I would do it, I would set up so that I can drip stuff in, have an equalizing funnel, not a set funnel, an equalizing funnel, and have a condenser, water pool condenser, um, to, you know, any fumes that come off, and I'd lead a hose to a suck back trap and a bubbler, and uh, I'd have the acetone in here, I'd have the bromine in here, and my original thought was to use acetic acid, because that's, I think, the ch choice of most chemists would be, uh, you know, acetic acid, but in this case, the boiling point of what we're making is very close to acetic acid. So when you get done, trying to separate these two things may be hard, okay? So I switch my idea, instead of using this as a solvent and an acid, I decided instead I will use sulfuric acid, okay? So I would cool everything down. You want this to be you know, 10 degrees Celsius or lower at all times. <clears throat> so I would put my acetone in the freezer and put the acetone in here. I'd chill everything down, bromine and the sulfuric acid. The bromine, now as you do this reaction, it's going to take a while. So your bromine is going to warm up in the meantime. You'll have an ice bath for the, you know, the pot, but the bromine is going to warm down. So what I would do is I'd just put a little bit of bromine in, let it drip, and then when it ran out, I would open this up real quick and dump some more bromine in there. You know, having the bromine in the freezer, chemical freezer, not your food freezer, so that it doesn't warm down during the reaction, you know what I mean? So I would have a little bit of bromine in here, put all my acetone in here, and when I was all ready, I'd put a few milliliters of sulfuric acid in as a catalyst in there. Then I would drip the bromine into the pot where the acetic, I mean, where the acetone and the sulfuric acid is. Uh, dripping in slow, like I was titrating. You know. Now, it, you know, you drip it in and it gets a little bit red and then it reacts and the red goes away, right? You want it to go back and forth from red to clear, you know what I mean? You don't want it so fast that you flood the, the reaction with a bunch of bromine. You want it to react as, it go, as it's dripped in, kind of. At least that's my guess. Uh, like I said, keep it below 10 Celsius. Uh, even if you have to stop the reaction, you know what I mean? Let's say your reaction is getting at 10 degrees Celsius. Then uh, you stop putting the bromine in. You know what I mean? You wait. You wait for the pot to cool back down. This is a one-to-one -one ratio on the bromine and the acetone. But I would probably put in more acetone than bromine. Uh, the reason why is because you might have the bromine, it can only attach one time 